Hey everyone, thanks for trying to learn to play games. My name is Lance, and in today's video, I'm going to be playing through a scenario from Resident Evil the board game. This is a brand new one from Steam Forge Games. It is a one to four player game that takes roughly 45 minutes to an hour and a half to play. It is a fully cooperative game where all the players are working together to defeat whichever scenario you've chosen to go on. This one can be played as one-off scenarios, or you can play a full campaign where you're going to be exploring the mansion, trying to complete different scenarios, which will open up different areas of the mansion that allow you to continue exploring and hopefully making your way to the helipad where you can escape for good and make it away from this horrible nightmare. So in this video, I'm going to be playing through the first floor, West A, as that is the recommended first scenario, but I could have chosen four different possible scenarios as my starting one. So that's the one I chose, and I'm going to be playing a three-player game using Chris, Barry, and Jill. So I'll see how this goes, and if I'm able to start off this nightmare and see how bad it gets. So, as always, if you find my videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button and subscribing to my channel. It's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow and be able to produce this content. If you want to get notified anytime I drop new videos, also give that notification bell a ring, and that'll let you know whenever I drop new stuff. Also, let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see anything else around this game, whether it's a teaching video, an updated overview video where I go over some of the new features of the game, or if you want me to continue playing the campaign. I think I'm going to do at least one other video for this as far as gameplay. I'd like to explore the mansion just a little bit more and try out one other area. And then after that, I'll leave it up to you. If I get enough feedback from this where you guys want me to continue, I will do so. And I might even do some polls in that to see, let you guys choose which path I'm going to take or which is the next scenario I'm going to take on. Let me know in the comments as well if there's any other suggestions for the, any type of interaction that you would like to have. Other polls or other things where we can have more of an interaction where you can choose a little bit more of what's going on in these scenarios as well. If that sounds like it's something interesting, definitely hit that like button, drop me a comment down below, and we'll see where this one goes. It'd be pretty cool to make it through and play a bunch of scenarios in some of these games. So I'm looking forward to potentially doing some of that. So let me know if this is one of the ones that you'd like me to play through. So let's go ahead and head to the table, and we'll see how this one plays. So before getting into the game, let's go over which one I'm playing. So I'm going to go ahead and try the first floor, West A. And this one's introduction is the wind lashes the trees outside. Leaves and branches scratching against the window panes like nails from sun unseen assailants. A flash of lightning paints your surroundings, and for a moment you are sure you see the shadow of a figure on the opposite side of the window. Hands pawing at the glass. Yet when your eyes find to the frame, there's nothing to be seen. Perhaps your imagination. Perhaps not. Finding a secure place feels like your first objective. Somewhere you don't have to watch the shadows for movement and can establish a base of operations. So my, for, my objectives for this one is in the scenario the characters must find and secure the safe house or safe room. If each character is in the safe room and the characters can choose successfully complete this scenario at any time. If there are any enemies on the safe room tile when the scenario is completed, skip to step six during the end phase. And there are a couple of special rules. So first off, it's a quiet area. So the tension deck runs out during this scenario. Shovel the discard pile and place it face down to refresh the deck. Additionally, if the scenario is successfully completed, skip to step two during the end phase. And then this is also a safe haven. So a character on the safe room tile does not have to draw a card during the tension phase. So that can be very handy. And then it gives me some instructions on some of the different decks, which cards to include and add to some of the decks. And it also gives me a, the number of exploration cards, so this one will have two. So after completing the scenario, I'm going to add the first floor West B scenario card to the map. And I don't have the map out for this particular one. It kind of depends on how you guys feel and whether or not this is a game that you would like me to continue playing additional scenarios in. So moving into this one, I've chosen to play with three characters. I have Jill Valentine, Barry Burton, and Chris Redfield. So I'm going to see how this goes. And I've chosen for Jill to start out on her own, and Chris and Barry are in the other area. So we'll see how this goes. So I'm going to go ahead and choose to have Barry start us off, and then it'll proceed clockwise around each of the characters from then on. 
So with Fairy, each character is going to start their action phase with four actions. So I can choose to do these actions in any order I want to. So I'm going to go ahead and start by making a attack with Barry against that zombie there. As he does have a nice ability. So he has accurate when making an attack with the handgun. Barry treats a full dodge result as a hit result instead. So that makes him really deadly as he's the only character that's going to be able to hit on 33% of his rolls. So we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to go ahead and start off my first attack by rolling, I think I'm going to go with two dice instead. So I'm going to drop it down to 13 and I'm going to roll two and we'll see how this, if I can get him. So I did get a full and I also got a move. So I'm going to go ahead and resolve the move first, moving him here. And then I'm going to resolve the hit, and that'll kill him. And then it also is going to drop a corpse there, as the zombies have tough hide. So if this enemy is killed, replace it with a corpse. So I have that. And that was my first action with Barry. So I'm going to go ahead and move. So that's one, two. And I do have one action remaining could open the door, but there is a dog in that other room. So I think I'm just going to hold there and not do anything else. So from there, then it's going to go into the reaction phase and any enemies on my tile or any tile that's connected my tile by an open doorway, which right now that door is not open. That's the reason why I kind of left it shut. Otherwise, the dog would have been able to react and take a move action. So there aren't any enemies I have to activate. So the last step in my turn is to resolve a tension card. So I'm going to draw a tension card from the deck. And this one is all clear. So F are the footsteps you hear at the edge of your earshot another survivor? Or do they belong to something else entirely? Regardless, one thing is clear. If you can hear them, they can hear you too. All right. So other than that, it is all clear. So that is the end of Barry's turn, and I'm moving into Chris Redfield's turn. So Chris, I'm going to go ahead and move him up here. I'm going to take this objective. So that is his second action. So I'm going to draw a card from the A deck, and he found a dagger. So this is a defensive item. So if this character is attacked by an enemy in the same or adjacent space and fails their evade roll, discard this card to pass the evade roll instead. So that hopefully will come in handy for Chris. And then that was his second action. So third and fourth, I'll move into there. So again, I have to draw a tension card as there aren't any enemies to activate. So let's go ahead and resolve that. Uh oh, so we have Deadly Rasp. A sinister growl echoes from the walls, dripping with malice and tense. But, there is, but where is it coming from? Are you under attack? Draw an encounter card. All right, so we have an encounter card. So this one is spawn a zombie. So we'll have a zombie popping up. And search the encounter deck, discard pile for any cards that spawn entities that spawn Cerberus enemies and shuffle them back into the deck. So there aren't any cards to handle with that one. Because that's the first card that is going to be, that was discarded. So that was a rough way to start us out. All right, so that is Chris's turn. So now it is over to Jill's turn. So Jill, I could kind of make my way over there. There is a B item over there in that room that's all isolated. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and open the door for her first action. Her second action, I'll go ahead and move into the room. So now that I'm in the room, now I have to resolve and find out what's in there. So I'm going to go ahead and discard that. And that's going to, that's a yellow caution. So that's going to have me drawing one encounter card. And this one has a couple of symbols on it. So Jill actually benefits from that. So when an encounter card with the star symbol is drawn, Jill and each other character on her tile heals one level. She's already at max health, so I'm okay there. And this one says to place a yellow unexplored token on this tile. Okay, so Jill is already on there. So, but if another character moves in there at that point, then we'd have to resolve that. So I opened the door for one, moved in for two. I'm going to go ahead and move over for three, and I'll pick this up for four. So Jill is going to draw, and she finds a lighter. 
All right, so now she has a, a way of getting rid of corpses as well. So that is her turn. So now we're going to activate enemies. There aren't any enemies in her room, but there are enemies in a room that is connected to her room by an open doorway. So each one of these enemies is going to react moving towards her. And each one of the zombies only moves one space. All right, so that is the end of their turn. So then it is over to Barry to go next. So Barry, I'm going to go ahead and open the door as his first action. His second action, I'm going to go ahead and move through. His third, I'm going to move up. And I'm going to go ahead and move one more time for four. And that is his turn. So then the enemies are going to activate. So the zombie is going to move. Well, first, technically, it goes by threat level. So the Cerberus dogs are a higher threat. So the Cerberus dog will move two spaces. And then this guy's going to move one space. All right. Then it is a threat card. So we have all clear. The light flickers overhead, caught in an unseen struggle against the shroud of darkness surrounding you. You better not remain here, at least it fails. All right. So Barry's turn is done. Over to Chris to go. Chris, I'm going to move through the door, close it for my second action. And I do not like that dog, so I'm going to go ahead and take a couple shots at him. I, let's see, with that, I'm going to go ahead and use... I'm going to use two bullets. So I'm going to go down to 13. We'll see what I can get with this. And I got two pushes. Question is, do I want to push him? I don't think so. So I'm going to go ahead and I have one action left. I'm going to take another shot. I'm going to use two more bullets. And let's see, maybe if I get lucky on this one. And that one is definitely cracked. So let's go ahead and reroll that and see. Come on, Chris. And it's off camera. So let's go ahead and roll this one. And it almost fell on the floor. All right. So that is a dead dog. And the dogs do not drop corpses. So I don't have to worry about that. And that was his last action. So Chris is done. The enemies are not going to activate. He closed the door, so there's nobody here. So then it is a tension card. And it's all clear. Fatigue burns you burns hard. Your muscles complaining as much as your frayed nerves on this long night of sustained horror. But for a moment at least, you found respite. Pause to calm your nerves and consider your next move. All right, so that is Chris's turn. So over to Jill. So at this point, Jill has done everything in there. So she's going to move one, two, and I think I'm going to just close that door for three. And I'm going to take a shot. I'll use two rounds. So she's down to 13. And I'll see if I can get this guy. And I did not. So he's going to move forward one, and so is the other guy. All right. Uh, that is all she's going to be able to do. So then the enemies are going to again activate. And then it's a exploration card or a tension card. So it's all clear. And again, it's the same thing as last time. All right. But it does have a symbol down there. So when enemies activate due to uh, unexpected things, they are going to benefit from those abilities. So that was Jill's turn. So we're back to Barry. Barry is around the corridor here. So he's going to go one, two, three, and he'll open that door for four. All right, again, there's no enemies, so it's straight to the tension deck. So this one's all clear, it all appears safe, but you don't dare relax. In this haunted nightmare, the slightest lapse of concentration can lead to an untimely demise. All right, over to Chris to go. Chris, again, is going to just simply move. One, two, three, four. That's all I can do. Again, there aren't any enemies to activate, so straight to the, his tension. And he's got cornered. A vicious snarl sends a shiver down your spine. As you realize your foe has found you once more, locate the tile closest to the active character where there are enemies but no characters. Remove the enemy on the tile with the highest threat and place them on this character's tile with the, in the closest spawn point. Which is that one. 
So the enemy pops up unexpectedly. All right, so Chris, you were not helpful there. All right, over to Jill. So Jill has some enemies in her space. Hmm. What to do? I'm going to go ahead and try the dagger. Let's test my luck on the guy in front of me. Uh, no luck. All right, so he's going to move in. And this guy's going to move forward. I am going to, as my second action, I'm going to go ahead and try to move out of his space. So I have to do an evasion and see if I'm successful. And I am. So I get to move out and he doesn't do anything bad to me. That was my second action. Third action. I'm going to go ahead and move. And my fourth action, I'm going to try to move again. So again, I have to evade him. And I'm good. Double evasion. Okay. All right, so that is Jill's turn. So again, the enemies are going to activate, so they're going to make their way back towards her. And tension card. Oh, no. Vigorous Mortis. Your enemies lunge for it un unexpectedly or unpredictably. Nails clawing through the air as their teeth snap with beastal hunger. Enemies on the same tile as the active character immediately perform a reaction. If there are no enemies on the active player's tile, then you're going to draw two tension cards instead. There is, unfortunately. So this guy is going to attack Jill. So she's going to have to make an evasion roll. And this guy is going to move forward. All right, and she did evade it. So she's going to get to push him one space away. And that'll take care of that card. So that actually worked out in my favor a little bit since she was able to evade that. All right, so that is Jill's turn. Over to Barry to go. So Barry's got an enemy in his space. Well, I'm going to go ahead and take some shots. So I'm going to go ahead and use three bullets as I really don't want that enemy in there. All right. So let's see if I can bring this guy down. Hey, hey, I got him. All right. So... I was able to take him out, and I do place a corpse token there. So that was my first action with Barry. Second action, we go ahead and move into the room. So now I have to resolve this encounter. And I find, after resolving all spawn entries on cards drawn for the, with this card, replace the closest corpse with a zombie. Oh, man, come on just went down and he's like nope Brrr, get back up okay so that was my second action uh oh tough call do i barry's probably yeah all right so i'm gonna go three and four so I can't go diagonally because there's this wall here. So I cannot cut directly across and go straight into B. All right. So then the enemy is going to activate and it's going to move towards the character it can see. So it's going to move towards Chris. And then I'm going to have to draw a card. So... It's an all clear. Soft light paints your surroundings. On any other night, in any other place, you might call the atmosphere relaxing. Well, I don't know if I'd say that. But not here and not now. This is a nightmare. Very true. Definitely not relaxing. You got a zombie right in his space. Chris has got some problems. All right. So, Chris, I am going to... I'm going to go ahead and move. I'm going to try to do a move. So, I have a dot or an evasion and I'm successful. I was able to evade, so I'm going to move as one, two, open the door for three, and I think I'm going to go ahead and move through. So in order to do that, with this scenario, this is going to have me revealing card number one, and then I have to set this up. So it's going to orientate like that. All right, so now that I'm all set up, the next thing I want to cover is there's uh, little squiggles on this map, which shows that there's a this is an actual opened frame, so this will never be shut down. So that will give Jill an opportunity to get through as well. 
but I want to be careful how I do that as enemies will be able to activate through those different spaces since I cannot close that door. All right, so I was moving in there. So now that I'm in there, now I have to resolve this. We'll see what we get here. So Chris, you have two cards. So the first one is spawn two zombies. All right. And then the second one is to spawn a zombie and draw a tension card. Man. Right. And the tension card is shattering glass. This could not get much worse. You jump at the sound of breaking glass and prepare for the worst. Draw an additional tension card. Okay, and these do not have effect right now as my threat level isn't high enough. So I have to draw an additional tension card, but this one is all clears. You pause, ears strained for even the slightest sound, nothing beyond your own rattled breath. So does that mean you are safe for now? Okay. Well, this room was full of bad guys. All right. Uh, that was... Chris's action phase, and now the enemies are going to activate, so we are going to have two enemies moving in with Chris. This guy's going to shamble forward, and that one is going to move forward as well. All right, that was Chris's turn, who is now surrounded by zombies. Over to Jill. So Jill, hmm. I may just want to pass on that. I don't know if it's worth a double card for just that. So yeah, I'm gonna move one, two, three. And I think I'm gonna hold there because I open that doorway up. That means that those zombies are going to activate and that'll activate quite a few of them. So I think I'm just gonna hold there. These guys are gonna shamble forward, coming after me. And then I have a tension card and I'm all clear. Silence, calm, peace. Do you truly trust these things or are they sinister traps tempting you into lowering your guard? All right, that is Jill's turn. So back over to Barry to go now. So Barry is going to first pick up the item card, B, and see what we find here. So he's got some first aid spray. That could come in handy for sure. All right, and that was his first action, second action, a third action. And he got item card A. So he's found some green herbs, okay. And his final action, I'm gonna go ahead and move. So from there then, we are going to resolve the rest. So this guy's gonna shamble in with Chris as well. So Chris has been completely surrounded now. And this guy's gonna move forward one space. So then Chris is going to be attacked and I'm gonna make an evasion roll with two dice. And I need a full evasion now that there are three enemies in my spaces. All three of them have basically ganged up to attack me. Come on, Chris. Oh, so close. All right, so Chris instead is going to use the dagger. So this says that if this character is attacked by an enemy in the same or adjacent square and fails their evade roll, this could card this card to pass the invade roll instead. So I get to pass, and I'll get to shove one guy out. So I'll shove him out. But Chris also has Survivor, so after Chris uses a defensive item, he's going to roll a d6. And if he can roll a 4, 5, or 6, he gets to return the item to his inventory. So let's see if Chris gets lucky here. It's a 3, so he does not. That's not so good. All right, so he does lose the dagger. And that's an item A. Okay. All right, Chris. So... That is Barry's turn. And so, and that was the enemy reaction. So now it is a tension card and it's all clear. So you hear the trees rustle outside, swaying in the wind. The longest of their branches tickles the window panes, scratching like nails. Lightning flashes and a long shadow stretches over the floor. Suddenly you're not sure the sound belongs to the tree after all. All right, so now it is Chris's turn. Chris has got his work cut out for him. Um, I mean, at this point, it might be better just to do an evasion. I think I'm going to go ahead and try that. So I'm going to go ahead and try the evasion. I need at least a half. 
on there and I got it. So that's what I needed. So I'm going to go ahead and move. And I'm going to go ahead and pick up B as my second action. And I find, I found the old key unlocks doors uh, locked by the simple lock. So I found the key that I actually need to get uh, through there. So that's good. And as Chris, I may want to just move. Uh, so that's three and four. All right, and then the enemies are going to activate. So he's going to move over and these guys are both going to move as well. And then he'll move through the door. So Chris has got a horde coming his way. All right, uh, that is Chris's turn. Uh, then we have the tension card and it's an all clear. So low growls torment you, sinister whispers that bleed from behind closed doors and through thin walls. In this hellish place, little respite is offered only moments to catch your breath for as long as you dare. Okay. Got the zombies. All right, so now that was Chris's turn to over to Jill. So Jill's gonna go ahead and open the door. She's gonna move in, which is gonna trigger this. So that's her second. And then we have spawn a zombie. Okay, her third, I'm gonna close the door. And Jill, what do I want to do here? Oop, I forgot to put a token in there. So there should be a token there. Okay. All right, so Jill, I think I'm gonna go ahead and take a shot on him. I'm gonna spend three rounds, so that'll put me down to 13. I'll see if I can get him. And I did, nice. All right, so he gets converted into a corpse. And then these guys are all going to move towards her. Okay. And that was her turn. So now they're going to activate again. So they're going to come through the doorway. And then that's a tension card. And she has Fevered Assault. So unnatural vigor possesses the undead as they hurl themselves towards you in a stambling, shambling run. During the next player's turn, increase the enemy movement values by one. Oof. All right, so that was her turn, so it's over to Chris, and he's going to have that. All right, so... I think I need to get off of that tile. So I'm going to go one. I'm going to open the door using my key for two. And that will reveal area two. Well, I moved for one, opened for two. Now I have to move through for three. That will reveal this. All right, so that is the second one there. So that is going to have me drop in some more stuff. So I'll go ahead and set that up. All right, so then I'm going to move in. And now I have to resolve this. So something, spawn a zombie. All right, and he's going to go into the one that's nearest me. And I have one action remaining. I'm going to close the door. Because otherwise those other guys are going to get to activate. And so he's going to move in with me during the reaction. And then I have a tension card. So it is all clear. All appears safe, but you don't dare relax. In this haunted nightmare, the slightest lapse in concentration can leave you in an untimely demise. Okay. So now I found the safe room, which is right there. So it's basically just a straight shot into there. I could go into here. I don't know if a item card, one level A item card is worth a double encounter. Because that could be very bad. But we'll see. All right. Uh, that was Chris's turn and I handled that. So it's over to Jill to go now. So... I'm going to go ahead and use a kerosene and my lighter 
to take care of that corpse. That's my first action. My second action, I'm going to move. Third, I'll open the door. And my fourth, I'm going to move into that room. Now that room is a green room, so there is no encounter there I have to worry about. So then these guys are going to go ahead and shamble forward. And the other benefit to that was he had this, so it gives the enemies extra movement. So I'm glad that uh, that was taken care of. All right. Uh, that was Jill's turn. Uh, the enemies moved, so now I have an encounter card to draw, so it's an all-clear. Light flickers overhead, caught by an uneven struggle against the Shroud of Darkness surrounding you. Better you not remain here. At least it fails. Alright, so it's over to Barry now. So Barry's up next. So Barry's going to go one, two, three, and four. And these guys are going to keep moving. Well, do they go back? That's the question. So they were here. Closest pathway, I think, is still going to be Jill. So they're going to keep moving towards her. All right. Uh, that is Barry's turn. The enemy's resolved. So now it is a tension card. So it is all clear. Fear, hunger, exhaustion. All are demons threatening to drag you down. But you won't let this evening be your last. Where another might find defeat, you only know resolve. You are a member of STARS, and you have a duty to perform. Okay, so that was Barry's turn. So it is over to Chris to go next. So Chris has used the key, so I can discard that. And Chris has got the enemy in there with him. Well, I could take a couple of shots with them. Try to take him down. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a couple of shots. So I'm going to drop my ammo down to nine. We'll see if I get lucky here. I do not, and I take damage. So I'm going to get to shove the enemy away one space, unfortunately. And... As Chris, I'm going to take some more shots. I'm going to go ahead and take. I'm going to take three this time. I'm down to six for ammo. Onto the enemy as my second action. All right, I got him with one success. So that enemy is down, and a corpse has been placed there instead. As my third action, I will spend a kerosene to eliminate that corpse because I do not want to deal with those guys. And. As my fourth action, I'll go ahead and open the door. Why not? I might be able to run in there real quick and grab that and get the heck out of there. We'll see what it is. All right. Uh, the door is closed, so there aren't any enemies to activate. So onto a threat card, So I, or attention card. I have unfolding events, so something unusual awaits in the gloom ahead. Draw a narrative card, then remove this card from the deck for the rest of the scenario. So we're going to place that up there. And I have a narrative card, so let's see what we find here. So this is Crimson Tide. So somewhere nearby you hear a door break open accompanied by a tide of vicious snares or snarls. Search the encounter deck and discard pile for uh, for each one encounter card and shuffle them into the top half of the encounter deck. If no one encounter cards have been added to the encounter deck, shuffle this card back into the deck and draw a replacement. Which I don't believe so because those are those are the crimson zombies or crimson hand zombies. So. Yeah, we don't have any of that, so that card is going to be shuffled back in. I'll draw a new card. Right, so. All right, so now I have captured. So this one is a distress call, sounds from your radio in a wash of static before being cut off by a series of gunshots. What new mystery is this? Draw a card from the survivor deck and place it to the side of the playing area with this card on top of it. Shuffle the three, number seven, 
of the triangle item A cards into the item deck, and then shuffle the one mission card into the mission deck. If there are no cards in the survivor deck, shuffle this card back in and replace it. All right, so I have to draw a card from the survivor deck and place it to the side of the playing area with this card on top of it. So we have Richard, and then we have to, I have to find those cards, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. All right, so I have the cards I need. So this one is searching for the Mo Discs. So this will be shuffled in with these. And then I also have the three discs, so those will be shuffled in with the A's. So now I'm on the search for those to free him. All right. And where was I with that? That was, that was Chris that had to draw that, and that was the, that was his tension card. All right, so that's Chris's turn. That's done. So now I am over to Jill to go next. Ooh, so does Jill, the question is, does Jill close that door first? She can move over, pick up, move over. So she'll still have one action remaining. So I'm gonna go ahead and move over, pick this card up, or the token, and I find some green herbs. And then I'll move back over. And the question is, do I close the door? Actually, I think I'm gonna go back here. All right, so that's all I'm gonna do there. The enemies are going to move, so they're gonna to move towards Jill. She's got a whole mess of them there. All right, so that's her turn, and then we have a tension card. So it's all clear. The dust falls from above in a thin trail accompanied by the thump of footsteps. You are there on the hunt looking for you. Over to Barry to go. So Barry is going to go ahead and move. One, two, three. And I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna hold there. I'm gonna go and try to help Jill out a little bit. All right, so then the enemies are gonna activate. They're closer to Jill, so they're gonna still move in. All right, so that's it there. And then I have a tension card, so it's all clear. So we're still okay there. And it's over to Chris next. Chris, I'm gonna go ahead and move in. So there's one. So I have two cards I'm gonna have to pull. First one is discard this card with no effect. Okay, and it is, it does have a star symbol on it. Unfortunately, Jill has not taken any damage yet, or that is fortunate, but so I don't have any effect there. And the second card is spawn a corpse. At the end of the active player's tension phase, replace each corpse on this tile with a zombie. At the end of the active player's tension phase, okay. So I'll leave that out. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I might as well spend my second action to burn that then. That way I don't have to worry about it because otherwise I could move for two, pick up for three, yeah, and I'm still gonna be there for four, so then there would be a zombie there. All right, uh, so then I'm gonna move for three and pick up for four. So now that I have those, so I found another green herb so I could use that to heal that, heal him at some point, but it's not just yet, so we're all clear. All right, so he's good, and it's back over to Jill. So Jill's got a ton of enemies in her, coming at her. Yeah, she's in trouble. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some shots. So there's one, two, three, I'm gonna take three rounds. And we'll see what we can do here. All right, so Jill, 
So he gets to push one away. Okay, so she pushes him back one. The other ones are going to be able to move into her space. Well, I'm going to take three more shots on one of the guys in there. And she rolls three, so she's going to take a damage. Well, that's unfortunate. And he's going to move back in. I bet she could try an evasion roll. Yeah, I think that's what she's going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and try to, to move. I need a full dodge. I did not get it, so I'm going to take a damage. And they're going to keep me there. And I have one action remaining. I'm going to try some more shots, so I'm going to do three more on them. Come on, Jill. And I got one. All right, good. So he is down, and I have corpse in there. And this guy cannot move in there because the space is full. All right, uh, that is that. So then the enemies are going to activate. They're going to attack Jill. So again, she has her evade of two. And she needed a double evade, so she's going to take a damage from that. But she does get to push one out of there. Okay, and then it's a tension card. It's all clear. Well, that did not go very well. So that is her turn. So it's over to Barry to go. Fortunately, Barry is a little farther back now. So I could go one, two, three, and take a shot. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that because I need to try to help out a little bit here. So I'm going to shoot with three rounds. So he's down to seven. And I'm going to shoot at the one that's in her space. And I missed completely. So unfortunately, that means the other ones are going to activate. So they're going to move. And he's going to move back in. All right, and then he's going to activate attacking Barry during his turn. And Barry is able to evade. Oh, I only can roll one, so I'm going to reroll that. And he misses, so I'm going to take a wound, but I get to shove him. So I'm going to shove him back. Or do I shove him back through the doorway? I think I'm going to shove him back through the doorway, because we might be able to close these off. All right, uh, that is... Everything I can do there. So now it is a tension card, and it's all clear, luckily. So back to Chris. Chris is going to move. One, two. I could just keep going. It's probably the best thing at this point. So, well, geez, what do I do? I don't necessarily want to activate them again. So I think I'm just going to hold there for the moment because my pathway is clear. Unfortunately, I am drawing tension cards, but I am all clear. And I think I'm just going to hold there because I might be able to go back if they run into more trouble. All right, so Chris is done. Back over to Jill to go. She's got one bullet left. She's got two zombies in there. I think I'm going to go ahead and try to move. So I'm going to do an evade. And she misses again. Man. So she's in danger. And she misses on that. What to do? But she does get to shove one out of there. 
or no, that's on an attack. Okay, actually she does get the push. So I'm gonna go ahead and push one back. I think I just need to get the heck out of that room. So I'm gonna try it again. I'm gonna try to evade and I'm good. So I get to move one and I think I need to do it one more time. So that's my second action. I got one, two actions left. So I'm gonna try it again. And I'm good. So I'm gonna move out and I'm gonna close that door. Whoop. And that is all she can do. Oof, that was a rough round for her. All right, uh, there's no enemies to activate. So now it's attention card and it's an all clear. So she's good. All right. She's done, so it's over to Barry to go. So I'm going to go ahead and move on back now. So one, two. And I'm going to open the door for three. And I think I'm just going to hold there. So again, there aren't any enemies, so it's all clear. All right, back to Chris. Chris, well, I'm going to go ahead and open the door and move one, two, three. There's nobody activate. So again, all clear. So now back to Jill. Jill's going to go one, two. And I think I, I think I just want to hold there again. So Nobody, and it's all clear. So back to Barry. Barry's going to move in. So I'm going to have to resolve the card, or two cards. So first one is spawn a zombie. All right, and second one is to spawn a Cerberus. All right, so that was his first action. Second action, third action. All right, I found a kerosene container. Instead of placing this card in this character's inventory, place it face up on this square with three kerosene tokens on it. Character in this square can spend an action to remove any number of tokens and add them to their profile card. When the last token is removed, discard this card. All right, and he's at max already. All right, so, so I kind of need to clear these guys out now. So I have one action remaining. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some shots on the dog. One, two, and three. I'm gonna spend three bullets and I'm gonna try to take that dog out. And no, I get to push the dog two spaces, which unfortunately isn't going to matter. Yeah, so it doesn't really matter. So it's gonna go there, but then when the enemies activate, he's gonna move in. And it does have to be, it doesn't have any range, so it has to be in my space. And same with this guy, he's gonna move in. All right, so that is Barry, and then it's a tension card, and it's all clear. Okay, so now it's over to Chris to go. Well, Chris, what are you gonna do? One, two, three. I had to move all the way in there. Be able to do anything. One, two, three, and close the door for four. So then I'm just gonna have to resolve a tension card. So we have reanimate. Dead eyes flicker open and reveal milky orbs as the closest corpse rises, rises unsteadily to its feet. Locate the corpse closest to the active character, remove the corpse token, and spawn a zombie. So it would basically be this one, as this is the only corpse out. So we have four zombies back in there again. All right, uh, that was 
Chris's turn, so it's over to Jill to go. So Jill's going to open the door, move in for one. I'm going to take a shot. So I got the one bullet left. This is open move, so this is my third action. She gets to push one enemy away. So she'll go ahead and push the dog. Or let's push the zombie. And the dog is going to stay there. So then she's going to go ahead and use her last action to try to knife the dog. Let's see if she can do something. Oh, she got the dog with the knife. Oh, that is clutch. Jill with her acrobatics and stabbing the dog. Man, that's epic. Wow. All right, so that was very successful. And that is Jill's turn. So then the zombie's going to move back in with Barry. And attention card is all clear. So that was very helpful. It is over to Barry to go. I'm going to go ahead and take some shots here. I'm going to spend... Through, yep, I'm going to go with three. So I really wanted this guy to go down. And I got him. So he is down and, or converted into a corpse. I'm going to go ahead and spend one of my kerosenes to light him up. So that will remove him from the board completely. And that was my first action. Second action, I'm going to go ahead and take one of the kerosenes on there. There's two left. Third action and fourth action. So I'm out of the room. And it's all clear. Over to Chris. Chris is going to move in. Move here. Pick up. So that was one, two, three, and four into Jill's space. And again, tension card. And we have a mission update. So your radio sputters to life. An abrupt reminder, you are not alone in this forsaken place. Draw a mission card. All right, so we have securing an escape route. Draw four cards. If this character survives and does not abandon the mission, reduce the man mansion's danger level by two. Okay, well, the danger level is at its lowest, at its starting position, but I still have to resolve the mission. So it's going to be Brett that's going to go on it. I'm going to draw four cards. So I have a clue symbol, so no effect. And this is all I'm resolving is the top symbol there. All three clues and one damage. So he's going to take one damage. And he was successful in the mission, and these just get shuffled back in. All right. So that mission is completed. All right, and that was Chris's turn. So now it is going to move back over to Jill to go. So Jill is going to, at this point, I think we pretty much just need to get the heck out of here. So one, two, one, two, three, four. And again, it's a tension card. Gnarling fear. So a bloody hands pushed at the windows and doors, a horde of foes waiting in ambush. If this character leaves their current tile during their next turn, they must draw two extra tension cards. All right, so I'm gonna push that on Jill and that is her turn over to Barry to go. He's gonna go ahead and move one, two, three, and four. And it's just tension for him as well. So no effect there. Back over to Chris to go. He's moving out one, two, three. Uh, one, two, three, and four. He's in with Chris, uh, Jill. And tension card, no effect. So Jill, Jill's going to go one, two, and she's going to hold there as she doesn't really want to draw a bunch of extra cards. So there's one for that. So Jill's good. Back over to Barry. He's going to go one, two, three, and four. And our characters are simply just hauling butt out of here now. So back to Chris. One, two, three, and four. And he's got frayed nerves. Move, movement chases through the shadows, enemies all around you. If the next character is on the same tile at the start of their neck of their tension phase, they begin their turn on. They must draw two additional tension cards. So that was Chris. So Jill has to be off of there. She's definitely going to be off of there. So no worries there. Back over to Jill's turn. One, 
two, she's going to close the door, three and four, just to be safe. And she has tragic echoes. So some of these fiends still possess trinket, trinkets from their former lives. Tragic echoes of what used to be. Locate the closest zombie to the active character and place an item A token underneath their base. When the, the zombie moves or is pushed, the token moves with the model. So I'm not going to do that as I am definitely not going after the, the zombie that has that. So at this point, the tension deck is going to be reshuffled as I'm out of tension cards. That is not going to have any effect on this particular mission as this is one of the early ones. So I don't have to worry about running out of tension cards. And our characters are almost ready to get out of here. And that was Jill that drew that. So it's going to be back over to Barry to go. All right, let's go ahead and stop there. And Barry, one, two, three, and four. So he can't do anything just yet and is all clear. Back over to Chris, one, two, three, and four. All clear. Jill, one, two, three, and four. All clear. Back to Barry, he's gonna go ahead and open the door and move in for one. And it's an item B. Well, I think I'm gonna go ahead and use the spray. So this lets me heal a character or, or heal this character or another character in the same or adjacent space by three levels. So one, two, and three. So I'll heal, heal Jill by that. And then that's going to be discarded. And I'm just gonna move over here. And now that he's in the safe room, he doesn't have to draw a tension card. So that was Barry's turn over to Chris. I'm gonna move one, two, three. And I'm gonna stop there. Again, I don't have to draw a tension card and over to Jill. She's going to go ahead and move in for one. And I think that is it for her as well. I could put items in the... Yeah, I'll go ahead and add these two items to the... Supply. And then that's her turn. And I'm going to go ahead and end it there as all my characters are in the safe house or safe room, and there are no enemies in there as well, so that will end the mission. All right, so now that I've ended the mission with the first floor West A, I do have, this is a quiet area, so I'm gonna skip step two during the end phase, and it's also gonna add the first floor West B scenario card to the map, so if I continue on, I'll handle that later. And then from there, then I do have the end phase that I'm gonna to have to handle now. So I did complete the scenario. So if players complete, completed this scenario, you're going to follow the steps below in order. So again, I'm going to skip step one, which would have the mansion danger level going up by one. So I'm going to go to step two. So if there are five or more corpses on the playing area, shuffle a one card into the encounter deck. If all four one encounter cards have already been added to the deck, increase the mansion danger level by one instead. I only have one corpse token out, so I don't have to handle two. Then step three is if there are five or more zombies on the playing area, increase the danger level by one. There are five or more, just barely. So it's going to go up by one. Okay. So next, discard any of the key items in player's inventories and item box. So I have two healing potions or to uh two of the green herbs, and I don't have any of the key ones, kind of like the kerosene there, or the uh, old key also would have qualified for that. So that's step four. So then step five is reset the handgun ammunition dial to 15, increase each other character's ammunition dial by two. So all I have right now are handguns. So these are all going to be reset back to 15. And we get to start the next mission all loaded up. I don't have any other hand or any other ammunition wheels at this point. 
Then it's going to allow me to heal each character, each player's character by one level. So each one of us goes up by one. So then we're all feel, fully healed. Uh, heal each non-exhausted character in the reserve by two levels. So Brett is fully healed as well. Shuffle any discarded item A, tension, and encounter cards back into their respective decks. First step eight, which I'll handle a little bit later, and then discard any remaining ink ribbons, which I did not have any. So after resolving the end phase, the players can choose their next scenario after choosing, but before setting up, players can switch characters, trade items, and use the item box to store or retrieve items. All right, so that was everything. So that will take care of this first mission. Well, I was able to make it through pretty well. There was a couple of spots where those zombies were really banging down on me, and that could have been really problematic for Jill. She was able to make those two clutch saves to get out of that room and make it out of there without too much trouble. And unfortunately, I had too many zombies at the end, so I did have to move that, that meter up on the mansion track. So hopefully I'll be able to find a way to, to tick that back down a little bit throughout the game. But overall, I did pretty well, I feel. My characters left that scenario at full health, and I was able to pick up a couple of additional items with only having to use that one spray. So I feel like I did pretty good with that. And I'm ready to explore the mansion a little bit further and see what else I can find. So at this point, I think I'm going to play at least one more mission. And then from there, I'll turn it over to you guys. If you would like me to continue on, let me know in those comments down below. And I think I'll start doing some polls as well if I get a good response to start having some interaction with you as well to determine which pathway I go. Also, let me know in the comments down below if there's other things that you would be interested in me doing polls on or other ways to make this a little bit more interactive as well because it, it is always fun to see what you want to happen as well and you know probably making me in, or putting me into rough situations and whatnot. So it'll be fun to see what comes up if this is one that ends up going forward and continuing. But again, I think I'll do at least one more video. I have a, I'm having a great time with this, so we'll see what happens with that. All right, so until next time, I'll see you later.